Well, Drudge is calling this the new world order. Obama has officially turned Putin into the world's superpower. Putin is now taking the lead in the terror fight. Now, this, of course, this baton was transferred on Monday. And uh, President Obama, he was kind of espousing the United Nations ideals from 70 years ago. Diplomacy and international order will win over time. Might and force will lose. Now, Putin, on the other hand, used his speech to announce the formation of a broad international coalition to fight ISIS in Syria and Iraq. And, uh, of course, we know who his ally is there. He's saying no one but President Bashar Assad, his armed forces, as well as the Kurds, are actually fighting the Islamic State. Now, Obama is, of course, that's counter to his view. He, he says he opposes the logic of supporting tyrants. After all, Assad drops barrel bombs on innocent children. And, of course, he made no mention of the bombs that he has dropped on innocent children in Pakistan. Uh, of course, no mention of the innocent children who have been bombed in Gaza. And, of course, he did not mention the fact that, yeah, he might not want to support a tyrant, but he is actively supporting these moderate rebels who then, of course, turn over and pledge their allegiance to ISIS. So he's ha helping to foment uh, the unrest in the region there. But, of course, that was not mentioned at the U.N. Now, Putin, of course, has troops in Syria. He's arming Assad to the teeth and has signed a pact of anti-ISIS intelligence sharing with Assad, Iran, and the leaders of Iraq, which, of course, the United States really fought to put those people in power, and now they are aligning themselves with Putin. So, meanwhile, if Obama has any serious plan for Syria, he certainly didn't mention it there at the U.N. or any other time, for that matter. But now, of course, the Daily Beast is reporting that uh, President Selfie Stick does have a plan. He, he's going to use Snapchat, Snapchat in the fight against ISIS. U.S. turns to Zero Dark Thirty writer for anti-ISIS propaganda. The State Department says it's losing the information more to ISIS and is tapping HBO, Snapchat, and a screenwriter with deep CIA connections to help turn things around. Now, uh, this is according to a State Department official who spoke with the Daily Beast. He said U.S. filmmakers and social media folks met with a bunch of international and regional filmmakers and broadcasters. And they had people who were at the top of their field. Their goal was to continue the dialogue that was started at the White House summit. Now, we reported on this earlier um, this year, as well as last year, just talking to you about how the White House is going to be working uh, with these large factions in Hollywood, actually actively propagating to people. We know that they're giving uh, script writers actual elements to put in your TV programs to push the president's agenda. Well, now this is going to a more global scale. So one of the goals, they say, was to connect Middle Eastern filmmakers with influential Hollywood figures so they could start plotting how to engage and empower storytellers to create alternative and positive narratives and how to talk about youth empowerment. So they're basically going to be countering all of ISIS's propaganda videos where they're showing the amazing life of a jihadi there and how great it is. And you can have all of these, you know, young virgins and things like that and blow things up. So they're going to counter that and show ISIS how wonderful, you know, how, how wonderful it could be. Don't join ISIS. Here you could have a job, uh, you know, creating an NGO or something like that. Now they talk about uh, in the past they've attempted these sorts of things as well. Just to fly around a bunch of Hollywood writers and producers for about a week uh, was about $4 million. And, of course, other recent attempts that they've tried at this have failed. They have, uh, the State Department has tried trolling terrorists on its own Twitter, uh, Facebook, YouTube, and online message boards. But, of course, the results have been very unimpressive. And, you know, <laughs> you read things like this, and then you wonder, is there is that really the objective there to fight ISIS? You're dropping them weapons in the region. Um, and now you're going to use Snapchat to counter their propaganda. Oh, and then look at this report coming out today. Obama gave over 1,500 terrorists asylum in the U.S. Now, this is according to documents that were obtained by Judicial Watch. And they reveal that the Obama administration gave as many as 1,519 terrorists asylum in the U.S. in 2014. They changed a law uh, allowing these kind of waiving these allow to allow the foreigners who are engaged in terrorism uh, because they say the crimes were committed while under duress. So this data was obtained from the DHS and the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service. And it reveals that more than 50 percent of those who were rewarded residency provided material support to terrorist organizations. The others received military type training from a terrorist organization voluntarily provided medical care to members of a terrorist group, and they solicited funds or individuals for membership in a terrorist organization. 
So in other words, there was a federal law that had zero tolerance for any kind of involvement with terrorist elements. And then the Obama administration, joint effort by DHS and the State Department, created a, a waiver, an exercise, an authority so that they could decide, you know, the government could say, oh, you know, these guys don't pose a threat. We'll go ahead and let them in. You know, just like they thought the Sarniavs didn't pose a threat, even though they were on the FBI's radar. And of course, they went on to carry out the Boston bombings. So doesn't that make you feel so much safer with a president selfie stick and, uh, you know, his Snapchat account? And he just can't wait to go hang out with his Hollywood big we big wigs after he is no longer the president. ISIS, meanwhile, is planning a nuclear tsunami. Now, this is according to a German reporter who was one of the only people who was able to successfully embed themselves with the Islamic State. Uh, he was there with the group for about 10 days, and he writes about this in his new book titled Inside IS, 10 Days in the Islamic State. And he says, nuclear annihilation across the globe. He says, the terrorists plan on killing several hundred million people. The West is drastically underestimating the power of ISIS. ISIS intends to get its hands on nuclear weapons, and he calls the group a nuclear tsunami preparing the largest religious cleansing in history. And of course, with this Iran nuclear deal, these Middle Eastern states who are opposed to Iran possibly getting nukes and lifting sanctions, there is basically going to be an arms race in the region for people to uh, be able to have nukes of their own. Talk about devastation, World War III. Good job, Obama. Now let's go to Obama warning of the apocalypse of jihad. And out of this crisis, they will bring in their world government. Here it is. When a dictator slaughters tens of thousands of his own people, that is not just a matter of one nation's internal affairs. It breeds human suffering on an order of magnitude that affects us all. Likewise, when a terrorist group beheads captives, slaughters the innocent and enslaves women, oh, he's all behind all of it. It's not a single nation's national security problem. That is an assault on all our humanity. Total evil, totally behind it, and then acts like he's against it. That's Emperor Palpatine level. I've said before and I will repeat, there is no room for accommodating an apocalyptic cult like ISIS. And the United States makes no apology for using our military as part of a broad coalition to go after them. <laughs> oh, I can't listen we to this. We do so with a determination to ensure that there will never be a safe haven for terrorists who carry out these crimes. Of course, they're creating a safe haven out we of part of Iraq. We have demonstrated over more than a decade of relentless pursuit and of Al-Qaeda. Syria. We will not be outlasted by extremists. Oh, no. You're totally empowering them 14 years after 9-11. On January 7, 2014, in an interview conducted by David Remnick of The New Yorker, President Obama flippantly referred to the acceleration of ISIS, stating, the analogy we use around here sometimes, and I think is accurate, is if a JV team puts on Lakers uniforms, that doesn't make them Kobe Bryant. This remark epitomizes the aloof culture in Washington to a growing reality now expanding into Europe and quietly lurking within the United States. However, we should be so lucky if Obama's comments were just careless rhetoric. The explosive report that more than 50 defense intelligence agency analysts had their data embellished by CENTCOM is now being investigated by Congress. A record number of Americans, according to a new Gallup poll, believe is riddled with corruption. And while Rome burns, German journalist Jürgen Totenhofer has revealed that the terrorists plan on killing several hundred million people. The West is drastically underestimating the power of ISIS. ISIS intends to get its hands on nuclear weapons, said Todenhofer, calling the group a nuclear tsunami, preparing the largest religious cleansing in history. They now control land greater in size than the United Kingdom and are supported by an almost ecstatic enthusiasm, the like of which I've never encountered before in a war zone. Every day, hundreds of willing fighters from all over the world come. They are the most brutal and most dangerous enemy I have ever seen in my life. I don't see anyone who has a real chance to stop them. Only Arabs can stop the Islamic State. I came back very pessimistic. Totenhofer spent 10 intense days chauffeured around the front lines by the UK's notorious Jihadi John. His bone-chilling book, Inside IS, 10 Days in the Islamic State, exposes an accurate depiction of a group at the very least allowed to grow on Obama's watch, hell-bent on nuclear devastation. Russia's actions are a problem. They don't pose the number one national security threat to the United States. 
I continue to be much more concerned when it comes to our security with the prospect of uh, a nuclear weapon going off in Manhattan. It was India's defense minister, Rao Inderjit Singh, sounding alarm bells back in May of 2015 that ISIS could acquire its first nuclear weapon from corrupt Pakistani officials, confirming a threat ISIS had made in its propaganda magazine, Dabit. Now, in what appears to be a lost Twilight Zone episode, Russia's Vladimir Putin is stepping up to fight Obama's JV team. ISIS. The Boston Herald's utterly weak Obama emasculated by Putin states, Putin kicked sand in Obama's face yesterday by announcing Russia has formed an ISIS intelligence sharing pact with Iran, Syria, and surprisingly enough, our ally Iraq, without America's involvement or consent. We're told that such retrenchment is required to beat back disorder, that it's the only way to stamp out terrorism or prevent foreign meddling. In accordance with this logic, we should support tyrants like Bashar al-Assad, who drops barrel bombs to massacre innocent children, because the alternative is surely worse. I have two words for you. Predator drones. <laughs> you will never see it coming. Putin has doubled down on protecting Syria and fighting the invasion of another victim of the globalist puppet Obama's insatiable appetite to destabilize the region as Libya and Egypt disintegrate into chaos. John Bound for Infowars.com. Well, we told you how last week Facebook was censoring one of our articles on the Pope Kid being nothing more than a PR stunt. Well, turns out that is exactly true. Facebook is actively censoring posts that are anti-immigration. Now, Mark Zuckerberg was caught on a hot mic saying that Facebook will censor anti-migrant posts. Now, uh, he was discussing the censorship of anti-migrant posts at the United Nations Development Summit on Saturday. Uh, he was speaking with the German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Now, Merkel confronted Zuckerberg on these social media posts that were critical of the wave of Syrian refugees entering Germany. And uh, after he was asked about Facebook's efforts to curtail speech, Zuckerberg stated, we need to do some work confirming that he'd already started looking at ways to hinder comments in opposition to Merkel's immigration stance. She said, are you working on this? Yeah. And so then, of course, at that point, their microphone was cut. So in response to this shocking revelation caught on a hot mic, media outlets like Bloomberg immediately leapt to the defense of Facebook, insin insinuating that any critique of the German government's response to this migrant crisis would be racist and xenophobic. And indeed, that's exactly the same sort of rhetoric we're hearing um, there in Germany, this xenophobia, if anyone posts this, they're saying that Germans could actually have their children snatched from them if they post anything on Facebook of the sort. Opposing influx of refugees puts people at risk of being fired as well. And this is according to the German Lawyers Association. And it was written in an article entitled Racism and Parenting, Threatening Loss of Custody. And it outlined the conditions under which xenophobic Facebook posts could lead to parents being targeted. So this is the issue with an all-seeing government. No thoughts are allowed that are not part of the collective, that are not going to further the agenda of the state. That's the big issue with having your every move tracked by the government. But you know what? It's no better over here. Let's take a look at what's going on in our schools. States using taxpayer funds to implant 10-year-olds with birth control. You heard it right. And there's actually no parental consent that is needed. So this is taxpayers in the state of Washington funding this disturbing practice of fitting extremely young public school girls with implantable, long-lasting birth control devices. And these, this is according to documents that were obtained by Judicial Watch. And these IUD implants are being administered at school-based clinics. So no wonder trust in the mainstream media has hit rock bottom and a record number of Americans now believe Congress is corrupt and specifically their own member of Congress because people realize we are all being controlled by corrupt 